Welcome to Clifford's Tower, York Castle, a royal stronghold. So here we are inside the King's Chapel, Henry III's Chapel. He needed a place to worship when he came to visit York and this was purpose built for him. Now, I love castles and fortresses because they remind me of power and strength and it reminds me that, you know, if, if the enemy is going to come in and attack somebody with a big castle or a big fortress, they're going to have to think twice about it. But when I think of the word fortress, I actually think of the word Holy Spirit. Remember Jesus talks about how the comforter will come, that word comforter there, describing the Holy Spirit, is, is basically a word from our Latin, which means con fortress, which means with strength. So I'm sure the king, when he had his, his times of trouble and times of difficulty, plain, came to his chapel to contemplate and ask for strength from God, from the Holy Spirit, to help him in his life. Now what about you? I'm sure you've had times in your life when you've been at your wit's end and you feel that like you haven't got the strength to go on. Well, that's one of those moments the Holy Spirit comes and he comforts us, he strengthens us to help us keep going. And when we get those moments where we just feel like we can't go forward anymore, but at the depths of a, the depths of a pit, and we're just like, God, I, I just can't go forward anymore. I just haven't got the strength to go forward anymore. And you want to give up. God then, through the Holy Spirit, strengthens us. That's why Paul later in Corinthians talks about may the God of all comfort, comfort us. In other words, may the God of all strength, strengthen us to help us through when those really difficult times come. I'm sure you've had times when you think I just can't go on any longer and you think that, that you're all alone. Well, the Bible tells us that God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And we have the Holy Spirit within us to remind us that God is with us all of the time, regardless of what difficult times we're going through, whether it's a financial setback or, a, or maybe losing our job or a death or a difficulty in our family, the Holy Spirit there is to strengthen us. The God of all strength is there to strengthen us. So the Holy Spirit is not only our comforter, our strengthener, but the Holy Spirit also prays on our behalf. I'm sure the king would have had many times up here on the top of the tower, with his hands in the air and screaming out to God, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. And, and maybe just tears flowing from his eyes. And, and maybe there's times where he's, he's just, he doesn't even know how to say what he wants to say because of the, the difficult time he's gone through his life. But one of the things about the Holy Spirit, he intercedes for us, as Paul tells us, he prays on our behalf. When we have those moments, and we all have them, when we don't know what to say, we don't know how to say it, but all we have is tears coming down, then the Holy Spirit takes those moans and groans, as Romans tells us, and he takes his tears, and he takes them and presses them before God, and God accepts them as worship. In other words, the Holy Spirit says what's really deep inside our hearts. And I'm sure the King, on many occasions, would have had many, many difficult times like that and challenges in his life where he just had to be silent and allow the Holy Spirit to pray on his behalf. Another reason we're given the gift of the Holy Spirit it's because the Holy Spirit is in the transformation business. He's trying to change us, not only our minds, but our lives as a whole. And what is he trying to change us into? Into the image of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. You know, when you think about that beautiful little uh, caterpillar that goes into a, a chrysalis and then it changes into a beautiful butterfly, that's what we call metamorphosis. And that's what the Bible talks about when you've been transformed, you've been morphed, you've been changed 
into the image of Jesus. And so the real question when we think about the Holy Spirit working in our lives is simply this. Do you look and sound more like Jesus than you did 12 months ago? Do you look and sound more like Jesus than you did a week ago? See, people should see Jesus in their lives. And people often say, well, how do you know you've got the Holy Spirit? Well, you know, you can't go to the doctors and look for an x-ray and say, there he is. No, you have to look at your own life. Are we producing his fruit in our lives? Are we looking more and more like Jesus? Are we allowing Jesus? Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us into the image of God's Son, Jesus?